Hello, welcome to this quick tips video for the mesh table settings in Autodesk Inventor Nastran INCAD 2018. In this video we're looking at how we can go above and beyond the normal mesh settings dialog box here in order to control the mesh size on each part, each component in the assembly. So this is the kind of mesh we get by default uh, when meshing in Inventor, Nastran INCAD. And you can see it looks great. We've got fine, uh, coarser mesh here, fine mesh on the curved surfaces, and we'll get great results out of this. However, we may have more mesh elements here than we actually need. So this area here, we've got very fine mesh as we saw but we don't necessarily need a fine mesh here we might want to control it and make it fine for a more accurate result somewhere else on the model so we're going to drill into the mesh table settings which can also be accessed in the mesh settings this button here and we're going to bulk change the mesh size for each of these uh, four components we have in the model, not the top level assembly here. And to do that just with this size uh, option here, if we're not quite sure which component we're looking at, if this is a model you picked up of someone else, for instance, then uh, we can easily find which uh, component we're talking about by switching the visibility on and off here. So we can isolate, okay, the main component is this one here. So let's change the size of that to maybe 10 millimeters, and you'll see the very different result that we get here. Now, if I was to select all of these elements um, and say generate, it's going to regenerate the mesh for the entire, the entire assembly, which might take some time. One really handy option here is only to tick the component that we want the new mesh generated for and if I now hit generate mesh rather than generating four meshes I'm only generating one and you can see everything else remains the same but we now have an evenly um, spaced an even density mesh across this whole part so we've overridden Nastran INCAD's default setting of changing the mesh and making it finer on the areas of high uh, geometry curvature and we said, no, we would like a mesh of eight millimeters consistently throughout this part. Now this is great, a good level of control here, but the problem with that is because we bulk changed the size of these elements, we've lost some of that really nice uh, graduated mesh size as we go over a curve or a fillet, for instance. What can we do about that while still retaining this more granular level of control? Well, let's take a look at the mesh here. We like the fact that we get the nice small elements on the fillet, but we want to make a bulk change to the size of the element, the average size of the element on this part. How can we do that? Well, first let's try and identify the part itself. And we can see it's the RAM part here by switching on and off the visibility. If I want the, the sort of the average element size um, to be, let's say uh, eight millimeters here, and I'll hit uh, generate mesh only for that uh, component here by ticking that one. And we've got an, ML, uh, an element size of eight millimeters here, but I want now some finer mesh on these internal fillets and so on and so forth. How can I control that? Well, I've got the settings button here. What I can actually do is to adjust some of these numbers in here. For instance, the refinement ratio, if I make that 0.2, for instance, then I'm saying we're allowed elements on the high curvature of the geometry that are 0.2 the size of the largest elements on the more flat geometry. So if I say uh, OK here and generate just that, uh, the mesh just for that component again, if I say generate mesh, then we'll see we're allowed actually some much smaller elements here um, and it graduates to larger elements here. but I might want it to graduate to the larger elements much faster here. How do we do that? Well, I can say the element growth rate can be a bit higher. So if I say actually it can grow a bit faster to larger elements here. So I'll change that to two and hit OK um, and generate mesh again. Then I'll see that the element size can change more rapidly to the larger elements here which is also pretty useful. If I hit settings again, I may want to say an element can't turn such a large corner here. So if I reduce these numbers here, then and say okay, and generate that again, 
I'll get more elements across this curve here. Let's just wait for that to finish. So you can see we do have the fine granular control that we want while doing bulk edits to the size of a mesh on a particular component. So that's very useful. Let's just uh, cancel out of this for the moment. But just another quick thing on visibilities here. You saw how in the mesh table we could control the visibility of the mesh for particular components. If we use that in conjunction with the normal inventor ability to control the visibility of the CAD bodies, then we've got an easy way to access geometry that's inside or not clearly visible um, in an assembly. Let me show you how this works. I want to do a local mesh control on this face of the um, this component here. It's quite difficult to see so what I might want to do is to turn off the visibility of the CAD bodies. Uh, excuse me, turn off the visibility of the mesh here. So I could turn off the visibility of all of that mesh um, either here or in the mesh table. Um, let's see if I turn a few of them off here and say OK. Then I can right click, um, excuse me, shift and right click uh, and say part priority and turn off by right clicking on this component the visibility of this component. And then using those two methods, I've then got the ability to do a local mesh control um, on this face here in particular, is what I want to do. So I'm going to say selected faces, pick this face here, change the element size to something smaller and say OK. And then back in my table I may want to turn on the visibility only of this the mesh for this component which happens to be this one here and then hit generate mesh only for that component to be able to see the local mesh change I've made to the size of the mesh there. And a final tip here, troubleshooting errors with meshing. You can see here we've got a question, uh, an exclamation mark by this particular component. If I select it, it's this main component here that we're having some trouble meshing with the size of mesh that we've currently specified. So what we can do is uh, we can select just that component. We could use this delete tool and we can delete the mesh on that particular component. We can regenerate it. And this is a really handy way of only generating the particular mesh for the particular component that's caused a problem um, without having to wait for four meshes to generate in this case. So maybe I can just resolve that problem by creating a, a smaller mesh size here. Let's hit generate mesh. And let's see if we can resolve that exclamation mark that we had by the mesh over here. We seem to have resolved that with a slightly smaller mesh that we can we can adjust with some local mesh control as well. So I hope you enjoyed the tips on the mesh table and we'll see you next time.